no matter what situation we're in, if it's a bad situation, a sad situation, he always knows how to flip it around into something good or to make me smile or happy. She takes a genuine interest in how my day was and she's always in a positive mood and I feed off that positivity. Chuck and I first met at a house party. The first time I met her, I was really like blown away at uh, how different she was than every other girl that I talked to. I thought he was really cute. <laughs> so I go to ask her out. I'm like, hey, Danielle, would you consider maybe hanging out with just me? And I'll go, go out. And she's like, no. I just thought we were just friends. <laughs> so, okay, well, you know, maybe in a few weeks though or something, you'd like to, uh, to go out or something. She goes, I'm actually moving to Costa Rica for six months. <laughs> so things are going great. <laughs> He claims that I fled for Costa Rica so I wouldn't have to date him, which is not true. So I went to study abroad for seven months in Costa Rica. The night I was driving home from the airport, he texted me and goes, hey, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to hang out? And I was like, I just got back from Costa Rica. Like, I'm going to spend some time with my family. Maybe, you know, this weekend we can hang out. That was at least a positive step forward for me. So then we made plans to meet up that weekend. And that's when we went on our first date. I hadn't been on like a real date where it's just, you know, her and I and I have to try to carry on conversation in a long time. I was terrified. And I was definitely nervous on our first date. I hadn't been on our first date in like since high school. So we went on a date, went and looked at Christmas lights. He came and picked me up. So we were in, in my beautiful Hyundai. <laughs> my car was incapable of going more than 40 miles an hour with oh, just a giant jolt. Literally like bump, like you would like stop and jerk. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into? She wanted to do the Christmas lights and I can't have her drive me around on our first date. And so we were driving around in his old car and then we went to the library pub and hung out and talked. Daniela is definitely a very sleepy girl. I'm very sleepy. <laughs> she falls asleep very easily. One of the first nights we hung out and I looked over and I went to say something to her and she was just out. I would fall asleep standing up, like literally against the wall, standing up. In hindsight, I guess it was kind of like, you know, think of her as like a sleeping beauty. And I have a B12 deficiency. And so that means I'm always tired because my body doesn't retain like my vitamins. And she always gets mad at me because I'm like, no, you can power through that. I mean, drink a Mountain Dew and you'll be fine. He thinks I'm making this up, but I finally went to the doctor like to get it diagnosed. We joke about it all the time now. So I told her that I loved her and it was probably a good like year and a half later before she ever told me that she loved me. He's like, I love you. I was like, what? I'd say, bye Danielle, I love you. And she'd say, bye Chuck. And I would just say, ah, try again next time. Every time he would say I love you, I'd just be like, I like you too. And then one day I told him I loved him. It was just kind of a, I love you. And I'm like, really? You mean it? And she's like, yeah, I do. I love you. I know, like it meant a lot to him when I said it. And I was just pumped. We've had two dogs. Our first one we got in May of last year, but he only lived for 13 days. When Tom Wan passed away, that was brutal. Chuck left work and like took care of everything. He paid for the vet, he, he paid for all the bills. I just have never seen that soft side of him before. We were both morning. And so we had to go get another dog. I said he's got to be named Tom too. Our first dog was named Tom and now this dog is named Tom too. Danielle and I have overcome our struggles. Those struggles were, were really early on in our relationship. He would gamble a lot. He would drink a lot. Part of the reason she was more reserved was from the way that I acted. You know, there were reasons not to trust me initially. Our relationship was definitely on the rocks during that time when he was trying to cut back on drinking and gambling, but he finally did it. I've made great strides in pretty much every area of my life, financially, with my career, with my family, you know, with her family, and even with my friends. He's like, you know what, I want to be a better man. I want to prove to you that I can be the man like you want to be with. And he did. I mean, I can't say that for sure she caused all of that, but I mean, that was a definite turning point. It was, you know, really when I decided, hey, I'm ready to get serious about our relationship. 
That's when my whole life really turned around. And I knew deep down like he had the willpower. I was changing for her, but deep down it was changing to get back to the roots of what I really cared about. He just needed that extra support from me. I think that through the struggles that we had early, the fact that we're able to really appreciate how much we enjoy being with each other now. We both just, we want to make each other happy. I actually had already bought the ring for her before she ever said she loved me. I kept it pretty secret. There were people that knew that I was kind of looking. Not very many people knew that I had a ring. Chuck and I planned a vacation with one of my sorority kids and her fiance. So I was planning on proposing on the vacation. We went to Mexico in December. I had this whole thing drawn up in my head of, I'm gonna do this on the second to last day that we're there. We're gonna have a nice dinner on the sand. I'm gonna organize all this stuff. Well, come to find out, that's really tough. I don't even speak Spanish. I woke up late for the, for the flight, and so we were rushing. So we're in Epley Airport. I've got the ring in my carry-on luggage. This thing's not leaving my sight. So we're walking through, and they flag me. On our way to Mexico, Chuck always got secondary inspection. So we fly into Mexico. We're at their airport. You had to push like a button, and it randomly chose people to search their luggage and their bags. So I hit the button, red. Sir, you gotta come over here. They check all my bags. Throw everything out of a suitcase, look at everything. And luckily, she was like 30 feet away, just kind of watching on. Thank God I never went up with him to get his bags checked because I would have seen a ring. They didn't ever take the ring out, but I know the lady looked right at it. I was just like, please, it's a, it's a woman. At least she'll understand what that is that's in there. She won't make a big deal and it turned out to be nothing. We get to the resort and they show us to our room and I swipe my key, doesn't work. So we are locked out of our room. It's 100 degrees. I'm sweating so bad. I'm as nervous as I can be. So we finally we get in there and we put all of our stuff down. I'm like, all right, Danielle, it's been a long day. Why don't you just go ahead, hop in the shower, and then we'll go meet our friends for dinner. I'm not showering. Like, let's go. This is an all-inclusive resort. Let's go and get a drink. Let's go explore. OK, well, I'm going to go ahead and unpack my bags. What do you mean you're going to unpack your suitcase? It's like, yeah, I want you know, I don't want anything to get wrinkly. And I was like, who are you? Why are you acting so weird? So she just kind of sits down and is, you know, looking through a pamphlet. And I was like, and by the way, I, I got you something. Going through my mind at the time, I thought it was a water camera, like something we could use. And I'm holding it behind my back and I said to her something along the lines of, everything's been going so great in our relationship. I'm just so thrilled. It seems like there's really been something kind of missing though. One major thing that's missing. And I pulled out a ring and I held it up. And then little did I know he was proposing to me. <laughs> so I had no idea. I was completely shocked. And she's just looking at me in the eyes and I'm like, you should look and see what I got you. He asked me and like, you know, I started crying and I didn't even look at the ring for like a good like 20 minutes because I was so like in shock. Danielle, will you marry me? And this is unforgettable line. She says, you choose me? Yes, it's not like there's a lineup. I mean, we're not on The, the Bachelor here. I was like, yes, I, I do. And he's like, so is that a yes? And I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Even when she says yes, she never looks at the ring, never looks at anything. She was giving me a big hug and a kiss, and I was like, Danielle, you, know, you gotta see this ring. Like, this is the best thing I've ever bought. And she still just isn't looking at it. She's just, you know, looking up around and freaking out. I was like, please put the ring on. And so finally she looked at it. We had talked about marriage maybe twice before our trip to Mexico, so I had no idea. She had absolutely no idea. forward to the most about getting married is starting a family with Chuck. When she describes herself, the first thing she always says is, I want lots of kids. That's always what she says. I'm excited to see him in like a fatherly role. We want a big family too. There'll never be a dull moment. <laughs> I love you so much, Chuck. I can't believe the day is finally here. I can't wait to see what these next couple of years are going to bring in our lives. I can't wait to start our lives together. I'm so excited. I think we're going to have a really good future for us. And I just I can't wait to see you know, what life has in store. Danielle, where we sit today is somewhere where for a long time in my life, I never thought that I was going to be able to sit next to an amazing bride, a woman that's going to make me a better man in my own life, and somebody that 
I can give my entire self to. You've made me become somebody that I always wanted to be, but always thought that I was gonna come up just short. And I don't know how I can ever thank you for what you've brought into my life. I guess the best way that I know how is just through a lifetime of joy and happiness. I love you.